Is there further debate? Gentleman from three. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've had a robust discussion, and I won't repeat any of the points that have already been made because they've been made well. I'd like to give a different perspective that hasn't been uh, demonstrated yet on the floor, and that's the perspective of an immigrant to this country. Um, I wanted to give this uh, discussion during the House Education meeting this morning, but we were rushed for time, and we had to end the discussion. Let me read you a list of names here. Yolanda Aguilar, Jimmy Salazar, Richard Gutierrez, Rosalia Palacio, Arturo Cifuentes, Sarah Pineda. These were the names of my classmates in grade school. I grew up in El Sereno, which is a suburb of East Los Angeles, East LA, man. Uh, I was the second place runt of the class. I finally outgrew that, but uh, only Sarah Pineda was smaller than me. There were only two towheads in the class, myself and Johnny Haygood. We didn't know we were different because we weren't told that we were different. We were just members of the community, members of the school class, and we treated each other with respect and dignity. There was none of this picking of the scab of racism or difference. It was unity. And that's something I'd like to emphasize here. Students have a finite amount of class time. And what we have to do in all of our educational courses is establish a hierarchy of learning. We need a balance of what is taught in schools. And by balance, let me give you an example. If we're teaching a class in anatomy, we don't want to give an undue amount of time spent on studying hair and skin at the expense of the circulatory system or the nervous system. Everything has to be balanced. There's also an issue of age appropriateness that hasn't been mentioned. We start inculcating this difference and I'm different than you and therefore I must hate you and everything else from kindergarten on up if some of these programs go through. The students do not have a chance of understanding the historical development and the culture behind some of those uh, past practices which are abhorrent. Everyone will agree with that. But when you start with the flip side of what's wrong with this country, you never get to the good. If we're really interested in the damage that discrimination has caused to humanity, we really have to, once again, put it in proper perspective and balance. We have to look at the discrimination that has been uh, professed against the educated and those people who have held differences of opinion of the official government of their countries. And by educated, let me give an example. In Vietnam, the Viet Cong would go into villages. And you know how they selected the people that they would kill? If you wore glasses, that means, means that you could read and you were educated and you could be a point of obstruction and defiance to the incoming communist government. So anyone wearing glasses was taken out and executed. We also have to realize that the biggest discriminator in the history of humanity has been government. I haven't heard a single person talk about discrimination based on the difference of your political viewpoint. There have been hundreds of millions of people that have been either starved to death, sent to concentration camps, or otherwise disposed of. And I'm talking about the Soviet Union, China, Cambodia, Laos, and other communist countries. So I'd like you to keep these perspectives in mind, and let's work on unity rather than the excessive time that we spend on differences. Thank you. Is there further debate?